health, diet, fitness, lifestyle. You're listening to It's Your Health Radio. And here's your host, Lisa Davis. Hello and welcome to It's Your Health. I'm so glad to have Dr. Michael McManman back on the program. He is from the College Internship Program, and he's going to tell us all about it. What is the College Internship Program? Well, sure. We uh, work with post-secondary students after high school, ages 18 to 27. We have six programs around the country, and basically we specialize in comprehensive services for kids with LD and Asperger's Syndrome and high-functioning autism. And there's a whole lot involved in that, but basically we're covering the whole gamut from social thinking, executive functioning, sensory integration, theory of mind, uh, residential, clinical, occupational therapy, career skills. I mean, we do, basically it's very individualized but uh, for each student, but cover all the areas. I'm so glad you do. As you know, we've talked before, my daughter has PDD, NOS, and NLD, and ADD, actually, so... Uh, she's, she definitely is going to need something like this when she's older. So this is a child is going to a college, or child listening, the young adult <laughs> is going to a college, and this is something that is nearby the college, correct, that they right. go for and support. They, okay. they don't have to, about two-thirds of our students are going to college. The other third are going into our C-STEP program, which is a career program. Oh, great. And they have, um, they're, working, they're working jobs and internships. Everyone has an internship, but we are located near groups of colleges, uh, depending upon which center we're at. Yeah, tell us where you are. Okay, we're in um, Lee, Massachusetts, which is in the Berkshires. It's, uh, we're in Melbourne, Florida, near Eastern Florida State College and Florida Institute Technology. And we're in um, Bloomington, Indiana, where there's a community college and also Indiana University that work together. And Long Beach, California, and that's just Southern California. And in Northern California, we're in um, Berkeley, which is, there's several colleges there in UC Berkeley. And then we're also in Amherst, New York, which is near Buffalo and near a bunch of really good schools, small colleges and um, University of Buffalo. Oh, that's great. Now, I understand that you have some uh, new additions to the curriculum or some upcoming events? Well, what we've been doing is we, so, you know, the, the problem is that I'm in charge, and that's the good thing also, <laughs> and, <laughs> because what Michael starts to get an idea about, then, you know, they sort of have to do unless they convince me out of it. So the realization I had, you know, in, in presenting with Temple Grand and Stephen Shore and all these other people that I work with was that we can't just be static and having them meet in appointments and we're in classrooms and offices, but they really need to be part of life. And this is even more so important than it would be with a regular neurotypical college student uh, or that age. So we have added a bunch of areas to our curriculum to try to get them moving and involved. We made a commitment that everyone, 100% of our students, would have a, a career internship while they're going to college or whatever else they're doing in the program. We um, have music therapists that, where they have a choice they can go to traditional therapy or have a music therapist or an art therapist. And so we do that, and then we've in- included the visual performing arts at a couple of our centers, and we're expanding that. So it, in the Berkshire Center in Massachusetts, we have a gallery, a theater, and our own theater spectrum playhouse, and we have, you know, a, a lot of other visual performing arts curriculum that they can specialize in. In Florida, we're adding a, a church that has a, we're buying a church across from the college, which also is set up like a theater. So we'll expand that there. We have equine assisted therapy, which is really wonderful. I got to experience that a few times when I'm down there. And a lot of major things I got out of it. I think just being out in the country and being with animals brings a lot out for people on the spectrum where they can sort of, uh, it's a microcosm of our, the way we think. And I'd like to talk more about that later, but we do a lot of visual performing arts now and, uh, you know, in, in, in community-based instruction. So that they're not, if they're doing social thinking instruction, they're not sitting in an office room, someone telling them 
how to have a reciprocal conversation. They're going out and doing it at their at, at a place where they might have their special interests, like a computer store or a music store. <clears throat> and they will be having a discussion and try to have a whole conversation and learn how to do that while they're think, working on their special interests. So we're definitely wanting to have them involved in every area and integrated in the community as much as possible. It sounds incredible. I mean, I, I'm so looking forward to my daughter taking part when when she's older. She's only eight now. I, I, I just hopefully she won't need that by then oh. because she will have had the right ABA. Therapy. Yeah, that's true. She does get a lot. <laughs> now in Massachusetts, other states, she'll have had the benefit of um, really good. You know, because you're going to advocate. Uh, the right type of services all the way along, and she might be able to just go by that point. Oh, that's true. There, she might be able to go to a regular... There's so many colleges are developing uh, programs, you know, to try to take advantage of this, that there'll probably be a school, depending upon what level of help she needs, that can help her, you know, right on campus. Oh, that's good. Well, you know, I bumped into a, a young woman recently, and... She goes to Landmark College in Vermont. She said she has right. dyslexia and ADHD, and she said it's been amazing. All right, you do have to take a full load to go there. We do we 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 refer to them and we get mm-hmm. referrals from them because many students on the spectrum that they do better with LD than spectrum students. Oh, okay. They're very mild, and they um and they refer to us, uh, and we refer to them students who are ready to take a full load and can handle regular dorm living, et cetera. So I think it just depends upon what you need. Yeah, you mentioned earlier that you wanted to expand on, on the on the equine. My daughter did a a program at a wonderful farm here called Windrush Farm where she was afraid to ride the horses. So she did a program where she got to lead the horses and brush them and tack them and muck the stall and she loved it. And we did it a couple of years ago, and then last summer she had to go to a summer school, and she had a, a, another thing, so she couldn't do it. But we went and visited the horses this over vacation, uh, winter vacation, and she was just so excited, and she just lit up. And it's such it seems like a, a such a nice thing too to help with you know getting an interest and in developing those skills. Well, it's a whole lot more than that too. And yeah, they, uh, they don't ride the horses in equine assisted therapy. Oh, they they work with them. Okay, so it's what she did. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, and I, I am opening my own. I'm trying to semi-retire here. Oh! And I bought I bought a, a farm, a couple of little farms that I'm putting together, and I'm making an organic, sustainable farm. But I'm also going to have horses, and probably have equine therapy here as well as we have in Florida. At our program in Florida, we have it. But my experience when I went out there was really a, a lot. I got a lot out of two sessions that I did with the psychiatrist. I mean, the psychologist down there is Dr. Wise, um, she's she's really good. And what happened to me? I'll just tell you briefly. Oh sure. Is I was in the pen in, in a circular pen with two horses, and she said, "Well, try to separate the horses." So I tried to separate them, and and being a typical male and being on the spectrum even more so, I just want to get what I want, and I want to do it the way I want to do it, and I want to overpower these horses, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, then it just dr- drove them away from me. And it, and it was a microcosm of my relationships where I try to just force my way into whatever I want. And, and so I had to back off and start a new strategy with her helping me. And I just got low and sort of knelt down, and sort of reached out and moved toward them slowly. And then they came and smelled my hand. And finally I could touch them and, and work with them and move them apart. So I learned a lot from that. And then the next time I went, I realized that I'm not clear enough in my instructions. With a horse, you have to be really clear with your body motions and your voice and your voice tone, and they really sensitive creatures, and they're, 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 they're creatures of prey. They're not predators, so they're very skittish. So I learned that I'm not really clear with what I want when people to do around me or my needs and things. So when I came back to the center after that session, I was having a meeting with this group, and this one woman said, well, this is what I planned, blah, 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 blah. And it was not my vision, and I simply spoke up very nicely and said, well, no, you know, I understand what you're saying, but this is not the course I want. This is exactly what I want. And I found myself being really clear and being able to be more of a leader 
after, and I knew where it came from, that horse, because I knew that I hadn't projected my voice, I hadn't said clearly what I wanted, and broke it down and made it clear for the person and I, without offending them. And so that is at 63 years old. If I had learned that at 18, who knows where I'd be now. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be talking to me, so, you know, everything. Yeah. That, <laughs> but, you know, I'm so glad you mentioned that because it's funny. My daughter was at a birthday party the other day, and... She wanted to play upstairs. It was after the party, and we stayed to play with her friend. And she said, you know, let's go upstairs. And her friend said, okay. And then she, you know, started doing something else. And she said, mommy, she said she was going to go upstairs. And I said, I know, but just it's her. For, let her just do what she wants. She said, yeah, but didn't you hear her? She said, you know, so it was like that insistence on, but this is what we're doing. And it, it's hard to change course, right? So I got to get her more with those horses. <laughs> right. Well, you know, we have to see what works, too, and what doesn't work. And when you're a horse, is a mirror of everything, it's, it mirrors back to your, your behavior and all of your nonverbal behavior. So I watched our students out there, and this one student came up to me and said, watch this, um, Dr. McMammon. And he opened his mouth and yawns, and the horse yawns. And they had formed a relationship with the horse, and the horse was mimicking his behavior. And, and I thought, I would, what came to my mind right away was, in the past, if you had said to me, oh, equine therapy, I would say, this is a bunch of crap. <laughs> and they're just trying to make money off, you know, getting people walking around with horses. But when I saw this, and I saw him be able to do this, I thought, and, and all the other interactions in the pen with them leading them and trying to get them to work together, the, the two students with a group of horses, it really does build teamwork, it builds social understanding, and it builds self-esteem. I know when I worked with the horses, I felt my self-esteem rise when the horse would let me come to it finally and let me touch it, pet it. So I felt like I had accomplished something or whatever. Oh, that is awesome. I, I just way in the door, mm-hmm. you know. We're, we're going one way at it. It's like most typical education is sit in the classroom um, in your chair. So we have a student from Israel who is exhibiting in our gallery here. And his mom was in here the other day, and he's an amazing artist. And she said, well, you know, when he was in school, I fought to get him to be able to do drawing while he was in class because they would stop him from drawing. But he focuses and learns more while he draws. And I thought, well, that's exactly what I got in trouble with in second grade. And and I can focus when I draw. I can listen to everything. So I've been doing these presentations on visual note-taking and visual systems to help students on the spectrum. That's what I'm doing in Greece, actually, at the American Community School in the next month. But basically, if they, if I had taken visual notes all through school, I would have remembered everything. And Mark Twain is the one who actually started that with doing visual note cards where speeches, and he just had a few pictures on them, and he remember the, the entire speech. Oh, wow. But You know, regular education doesn't accommodate that, and at least back when I was a child, the nun in my class did not like it. No, that must have been tough. (laughs) I definitely feel for you. Well, Dr. McMahon, you always have such fantastic information. Do you have anything else you wanted to add about CIP today? I just wanted to mention that we have an event in Boston. I know you have a lot of uh, listeners in Boston. Yeah. It's It's at the public library, Boston Public Library on Boylston Street on March 8th from 2 to 4.30. It's not just me speaking. It's seven other individuals, including Barbara Bissonnette, who just wrote a book on careers with uh, Jessica Kingsley, uh, Josh Doyle, who's an educational consultant. They'll all be speaking 15 minutes at a time. There's seven people on a panel about transition to, you know, college and careers for kids on the spectrum. So that's on March 8th at 2 to 4.30. And we do have a bunch of these type of events around the country. So our website is CIP Worldwide. Um, and you look, if you look at the uh, events page, you will see, uh, I mean, it's collegeinternshipprogram.com. I'm sorry, .org. I'm messing it up. Oh, that's okay. Anyway, if you look at the collegeinternship.org, uh, you will find events page, and it has all these events around the country. And I also speak on my book, which is made for good purpose, through Jessica Kingsley. It is all stories of students on the 
spectrum and with LD in all those areas of the curriculum I mentioned early on. So it's an easy read. And it's a great book. Professionals will identify with it. Oh, terrific. You are fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. McMahon, and I love having you on. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for listening. For more information, go to itsyourhealthnetwork.com.